before I show it to you, I've been asked to point something out in case you mistake views for facts. Uh, the following is a short film by the documentary maker Adam Curtis, the man behind The Power of Nightmares, The Century of the Self and The Trap. It represents his personal and some might say controversial viewpoint. It's therefore his viewpoint. It's his viewpoint. It's his viewpoint. It's a man's viewpoint. It's not a big bunch of facts carved into a concrete block by a in fact, computer, all right? It's one man's viewpoint. Are you ready for it? Yes. Good. Here we go. Everyone knows that television news can be boring. That's because it's often about politics, which can be very dull. This unprecedented aid for Scottish mining, and no one else is getting it, comes at a time when the indicators show some difficulties for Labour in Scotland. Book him, Dino. But these days, there is another problem with watching the news. Night after night, we are shown pictures of terrible things which we feel we can do nothing about. Images of civil wars, massacres and starving children, which leave us feeling helpless and depressed, and to which the only response is, oh dear. There is a name for this. It's called Odearism. And this is the story of the rise of Odearism in television news. It began with the rise of the counterculture in the 1960s. The radicals believed that all politics was corrupt because it always involved power. Bring the police. Send for the police quickly. Cut your hair. The radicals wanted to find a new way to connect directly with the dispossessed in the world, bypassing politicians. Their chance came in 1968 with the Biafran civil war in Africa. Western politicians were doing nothing as thousands starved. So a group of radicals began a campaign to rescue the dying children. Propaganda films were made that portrayed the conflict dramatically as a new holocaust. Celebrities held 48-hour vigils, and television news eagerly covered it. And then Blue Peter held an appeal for Biafra, and the response astonished everyone. We asked for 144,000 parcels, and you'll never guess just how many we got. We got 1,444,000, and that is 10 times more than our actual target. What Biafra began reached its high point in 1985 with Live Aid. Michael Burke's news reports of the Ethiopian famine had shocked the West. Bob Geldof then used television to create an extraordinary event of global altruism. It showed that we together could do more to save the world than our ineffectual and corrupted politicians. And it also made us feel good about ourselves. Those running Live Aid thought that they had transcended the corruption of politics. But actually, the money they raised may have had its own corrupting and destructive effects in Africa. The dictator of Ethiopia, Colonel Mengistu, was fighting a civil war. And some have claimed that he used Western aid to fund the war and to prolong it for a further six years. Médecins Sans Frontières has said that this may have led to as many deaths as were actually saved by the aid. But this wasn't reported because it was too complicated and it wouldn't have made us feel good about ourselves. Go on. Then, in 1989, the West won the Cold War. The old political story of left versus right was finished. But reporters still needed a grand, simple story about the world into which all the chaotic events and fragments of stuff that happen every day could be fitted. And waiting in the wings was the hippie counterculture view of the world, a view which saw everything as a struggle between innocent individuals and corrupt political systems. And TV news embraced it eagerly. And it worked. From the glorious revolutions in Eastern Europe to the brave students in Tiananmen Square, through to the plucky Bosnians in the horror of Sarajevo, television news told a story of noble individuals bravely standing up against bad political systems. But this simple battle between good and evil couldn't last. 
and it finally cracked back where it first began, in Africa. In 1994, the Hutus massacred millions of Tutsis in Rwanda. In the wake of the massacres, millions of refugees flooded into the Congo. Western aid workers and television crews also flooded in to help the innocent victims. But they soon discovered that many of them weren't innocent at all. They were the evil Hutus who had killed millions of the Tutsis. When people crossed the border, we, we all knew very well that among them there were murderers, there were people, the people that were helping. Every time we give out food, every time we give health, health services, uh, we know that among the people that we're helping, there are murderers. Then the Tutsis invaded the camps to get their revenge. But instead of behaving like good victims, they too carried out terrible massacres. And a horrific war began in which four and a half million people died and everyone was evil, even the children. And that had a terrible effect on television news. Because when there weren't any good or innocent people to support any longer, the kind of news reporting invented in the 90s made no sense. Because the news had given up reporting them as political struggles, it meant there was now no way to understand why these terrible events were happening. And instead, political conflicts around the world, from Darfur to Gaza, are now portrayed to us as simple illustrations of the mindless cruelty of the human race, about which nothing can be done, and to which the only response is, oh dear. It's like living in the mind of a depressed hippie.